One of the most common fitness myths is that you have to eat every two to three hours to maximize muscle growth and stoke your metabolic fire. In theory, this keeps your metabolism high and burns more fat while simultaneously giving your body the nutrients it requires to build muscle. Some people also claim that if you go for more than five hours without eating, you'll risk going catabolic and lose all your precious gains. But is this true? Let's look at what the science says and how important meal frequency is for muscle growth. Meal frequency and body composition changes. Let's start by investigating how meal frequency can affect your body composition. A 2015 meta-analysis of 15 studies looked at the effects of meal frequency on weight loss and body composition changes. Initial results of this analysis suggested a potential advantage for higher meal frequencies, but these positive findings stemmed from one single study out of the 15 analyzed. When the outlier study was removed from the review, the results showed no effect for low meal frequencies, which were one to two meals per day, compared to high meal frequencies at five plus meals per day on fat mass, lean mass, or weight loss. In other words, meal frequency did not significantly impact body composition, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. One of the main limitations of this research is it did not look at appetite control and the impact meal frequency has on hunger and satiety, as this can improve dietary adherence and lead to better long-term results. So what does the current evidence say about that? Meal frequency and appetite control. According to the International Society of Sports Nutrition position stand on meal frequency, eating more frequently can help decrease hunger and improve appetite control. However, research also suggests that your meal quantity, volume, and macronutrient composition affect hunger and satiety. Having said that, it seems that anywhere between three to six meals has a similar impact on hunger and body composition. It's worth pointing out that these results are averages, and you may find that you're an outlier. If you find that two to three meals per day works best for you, or you prefer to eat more frequent, more minor meals, then keep doing it. So the next question is how meal frequency impacts protein synthesis. Meal frequency and muscle protein synthesis. It seems three to six meals can be equally effective for fat loss, lean mass gains, and appetite control. But what if your goal is to maximize muscle growth and you wanna make sure no stone is left unturned? Could more frequent meals lead to better results? To answer this question, we need to understand muscle protein synthesis. A simple analogy you can think of is picturing your muscles as a wall, and your main goal is to make the wall bigger. The bricks of the wall are made of amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, and you want to have more bricks to make the wall bigger. In other words, you want to have available amino acids for muscle growth. The addition of these bricks into the wall is muscle protein synthesis. Where do you get these amino acids from? Food. More specifically, protein-rich foods. So, in theory, if you eat more meals, would the extra amino acids lead to better results? Sadly, no. And this brings us to our next question. How much protein can you absorb in one meal? There is a common myth that you can only absorb 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. The key word here is absorption. Your body can virtually absorb all the protein you eat. So the real question is, how much of that protein can be used for muscle growth? Although there isn't a clear answer for this question, there's a lot of research that can help us make more informed decisions. For example, a 2015 study found that 0.18 grams per pound per meal seems to optimize muscle protein synthesis. This tells us that bigger individuals need more protein to maximize muscle protein synthesis. For example, a 154 pound individual should aim for about 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal, whereas a 220 pound individual would aim for 40 grams of protein per meal. In addition, the amount of protein you need also depends on the amount of muscle mass being trained. In contrast to previous studies, a 2016 paper showed that 40 grams of protein was better than 20 grams to optimize muscle protein synthesis. The main difference between these findings is that the previous studies used lower body training only, whereas this study used a full body routine. This suggests that you require more protein to maximize muscle protein synthesis when you activate more muscle mass in a workout. Lastly, another factor that influences how much protein your body can utilize is age. As you get older, a phenomenon known as anabolic resistance occurs. Simply put, you require more protein to get the same anabolic response as someone younger. If you're wondering, this is more common among the elderly, so if you're not in that category, don't worry, as this does not affect you. So by now you can see that it's not as simple as saying you can only utilize 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal for muscle growth. Individual context and goals also impact how much protein you should aim for. Furthermore, an important caveat is that these studies looked at an acute response in muscle protein synthesis, not long-term trials looking at muscle hypertrophy, making it difficult to draw firm conclusions. 
For example, in the intermittent fasting community, it's common for individuals to eat two to three meals per day with a lot more protein than the amount we just recommended, going up to 70 to 100 grams of protein per meal. Yet, in a real-world scenario, it seems they're still able to make gains and maintain muscle mass. To add to this point, a 2009 study found that consuming, on average, 101 grams of protein in one four-hour feeding window versus more conventional meal frequency resulted in no differences in lean mass preservation between groups. So, how do calories tie into all this? Let's address that now. Meal frequency and total caloric intake. Your total caloric intake and daily protein intake are key components of any muscle building or fat loss program. So how does meal frequency come into play here? Well, you can adjust your meal frequency to manage your total caloric intake and add more protein throughout the day if needed, like a protein shake between meals or after a workout, for example. Additionally, if you're looking to build muscle, you probably want to create a slight caloric surplus for an optimal muscle growth environment. Eating smaller, frequent meals may help you achieve this by eating more total calories. Imagine you have to eat 3,000 or more calories per day, but you're struggling to eat all that food. Splitting your calories in four to six meals might make it easier to reach your goals than eating three big meals like the traditional breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Lastly, your lifestyle is also something to consider. If you have a busy lifestyle and find that having three to four meals per day is practical and you can hit your daily protein and calorie goals, then there's no reason to change anything just for the sake of it. So what to make of all this information? First, let's do a quick recap and go over some practical recommendations. In a real-world scenario, there doesn't seem to exist a clear answer that works for everyone. But here are two tips we can give based on the current evidence. Number one, the most important thing for maximizing muscle growth, apart from resistance training, is hitting your daily total protein intake and eating enough calories to support muscle growth. Make sure that part is taken care of before thinking about other details like how many meals per day you should have. A good goal to aim for is 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is roughly 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, as this should be more than enough to maximize muscle growth. Number two, next, if your goal is to maximize muscle protein synthesis, we suggest aiming for four to five meals per day while spreading your protein intake evenly. 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal is a great reference point. Ideally, you also want to include a high quality protein source either before or right after your workout. For those of you who practice intermittent fasting and are seeing good results, keep doing it. Keep in mind that this video is all about maximizing muscle growth and your goals will also dictate which approach is best for you. If you're looking to leave no stone unturned in maximizing muscle growth, then having four to five meals will probably be the best option for maximizing muscle protein synthesis. However, if you enjoy intermittent fasting and your goals are mainly to stay in shape and related to fat loss, there's probably no need to change your meal frequency. Remember, if you're training hard and you're able to reach your daily protein and calorie goals consistently, you're doing great at the end of the day. Smaller details such as the number of meals you have are probably not going to have a significant impact on your results if all else is taken care of, like training with progressive overload and adequate volume for your individual needs, sleeping 7-8 to eight hours per night, and having a healthy diet. Choose the meal frequency that allows you to stay consistent with your diet while ticking all the boxes we just mentioned. Knowing this will give you more freedom with your schedule and you won't feel like you're missing out on gains if you don't eat every two to three hours. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll genuinely help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for a bit of an edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order, plus free shipping, by using coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com slash supplements or click the link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.